and thought about the three, now puts it on the deck. Kicks it out. Grassi towards the rim. And she's going to be fouled, and she'll be going up. It's going to go on Villard. That's now the fourth, per, the fourth team foul, I should say, on Eastern Connecticut State. So the next foul, that's not offensive, will be a shooting situation in the bonus for UMass Boston, but not before Eastern Connecticut State burns a timeout. Nine-point lead for the Warriors on the Beacons Broadcast Network. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. For me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school, but every second isn't worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where it'll take them in the future. This is what UMass Boston means to me. Welcome back inside the Clark Athletic Center. Nine-point lead for the Warriors of Eastern Connecticut State. Grassi sends that one high towards Thompson. Inside. Grassi spins, no good. Grassi again can't get that one to fall. Villard with the rebound. You don't get many second chance opportunities against this Warriors team. And right now, it's been that kind of night for UMass Boston inside Villard. And she scores again. Maya Villard, another bucket. And the Beacons now trail by double figures for the first time since the beginning of the second half. Mazik down the lane, almost threw it away, but Canones gets it back, kicks it out. Now Mazik towards the rim, and she goes up with the runner. It's no good. And Keckler traveled with it. Wasn't a lot of contact. It looked like she kind of just went down on her own. 22 points now for Villard in this game. So two 20-point scorers in Grassi and Villard. Inside, it's Thompson. She's fouled, threw it up, and she'll go to the line. Still a lot of time left in this game for UMass Boston as Thompson will shoot two at the foul stripe. Maya Thompson this year coming in just over 47% from the free throw line. It's no good. And Paulino will check in and check back in for Jackson. Probably see a lot of offense, defense the rest of the way for UMass Boston. Coach Ball electing to go defensively, putting Jackson on the bench. And that one is no good. Rebound by Santagana. And the other way comes Eastern Connecticut State. Trying to stretch that advantage. UMass Boston in desperate need of a stop. Towards the wing, inside. Cretella kicks it corner. Jordan, she'll pull the mid-range jumper. It's no good. And that one grabbed by Canones. After a loud first half, it's been quiet for Julie Jordan. Mazik with a pull-up jumper. That one is no good. And it's grabbed by Villard. Keckler the other way. Jordan. Almost threw it away. Inside Villard. And scores again, 24 for Maya Villard. And it's up to 11, almost a steal, and it is going to be a turnover. The turnover as Jordan gets her hand in there and knocks it off of Mazik. And a timeout is going to be taken by head coach Christina Baugh. UMass Boston trailing by 13 with 2.15 to go inside the Clark Athletic Center.
Welcome back inside the Clark Athletic Center. Elijah Gonzalez here with you. UMass Boston trailing by 13, 2.15 to go. And a hill to climb for the Beacons, but for UMass Boston, it's now two nights where the second half has been a tough spot for them. And the inbound comes. Keckler swings. Looking to go inside. Back out top, Villard. Swing over to Jordan. Cretella thought about the three, now goes to the rim, and a foul is going to be called on Thompson. So Maya Thompson picks up the foul. And that is going to be the fifth foul on Maya Thompson. So her night is going to be done. And Gianna Williams will come back in. So Williams checking in for Thompson. And Cretella will try to stretch this advantage even more in a spot where the Warriors have been excellent tonight, the free throw line. That one is up and good. And it's one for one. Next free throw is good. Over 80% from the foul line for Eastern Connecticut State. Here in this game. Jackson. Off the screen. Gives it off. Mazik. Layup. And it rattles home. Full court press being applied here by the Beacons. Keckler spins out of a trap and gets it to Jordan. Jordan now has time to just kill the clock. We'll see who they decide to foul if and when they decide to foul. Jordan to the rim. Jordan can't get it to go. The other way come the Beacons. 13-point advantage. Canones kicks it out. Mazik the jumper, and an offensive foul is going to be called on Canones. So an offensive foul is called on the Beacons. And unfortunate for them because that one might have went down. So Paulino checks back in. And Jackson comes out, a little offense defense here, and a foul on Joey Grassi. That will send Keckler to the line. So Grassi picks up her third personal. So Keckler now at the free throw line. Again, Eastern Connecticut State. An impressive mark there tonight, and it just continues. Now 18 of 22 from the free throw line tonight. Marking them right around the 81% mark. Compared to UMass Boston, 14 of 24 from the charity stripe. Jackson going to have to score quickly here with 1.04 to go. Gets it to Grassi in the high post. Grassi goes down the right side. It's no good. Barry grabs the miss. We'll see if UMass Boston decides to foul. Villard gives it to Jordan. They may just hold off. Under a minute to go. And the UMass Boston Beacons are electing not to foul here. Trailing by 15. And now Grassi will commit the foul. So Gratella will go to the line with just under 38 seconds to go. And that will bring Gratella to the stripe. Free throws up and good. This will improve Eastern Connecticut State to eight and three in Little East Conference play. UMass Boston now going to be eight and four, but again, it's been these two teams battling it out, and UMass Boston 
still in position where a couple of things fall their way in a timeout taken here by Coach Ball. They could possibly be in position to get back into second place within the next couple of days. Step aside here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Endurance and speed. Incredible power. This trophy is not given, it must be earned. The NCAA Division III Men's and Women's Indoor Track and Field Championships, March 8th and 9th at the Reggie Lewis Center in Boston. Visit NCAA.com slash tickets to secure your seats today. Welcome back inside the Beacons Broadcast Network. Elijah Gonzalez here with you. Jelani Jackson inbounding for UMass Boston. 37 seconds remain. And the Beacons just looking to try and find some offense here late in a game that looks to be all but out of reach. Jackson, layup on the left side is good. Full court press now for the Beacons. Inbound. Almost a turnover, Gratella gets it out. Jordan up the floor to Barry and gets it back to her. And Julie Jordan will pull it out. And this should wrap it up. Beacons will not foul. Clock is now under 10. And Eastern Connecticut State, well, Grassi will pick up the foul with 5.8 seconds to go. And that's going to be foul number five on Joey Grassi. So Cretella will go to the line. Gautier will check in. As she replaces Grassi. So Cretella now at the line. The junior coming in, one of the more experienced players in the backcourt for the Warriors. This is a Warriors team that's added some depth with some freshmen. Of course, you bring back two talented guards in Jordan and Cretella. We saw a couple of other freshmen, though, tonight. Sarantino helped out in that guard realm, and, of course, Keckler as well. Jackson, with one, lays it in, and with .1 seconds, the clock will expire. UMass Boston falls tonight by a final score of 72-57. to Eastern Connecticut State improving to 13-7 and on the year. And eight and three in Little East Conference play for UMass Boston. They fall now to 15 and six and eight and four in Little East Conference play. We'll step aside. We come back. We'll have more for you right here from the Clark Athletic Center here on the campus of UMass Boston. You're watching Beacons Basketball on the Beacons Broadcast Network. I'm Elizabeth Clavin, sophomore business management major from Edina, Minnesota. I love being a part of this volleyball team. Volleyball is what brought me to UMass Boston. I looked at our recruiting website one last time and saw UMass Boston on it, came out for a visit the next week, and it kind of hit all the box that I was looking for. In a good city, good academic school, good volleyball program, it had everything I wanted. Although it was far away from home, I knew this is where I wanted to be. Winning six back-to-back -back LEC titles is really a dynasty, I think, and Terry has really focused hard on recruiting and building this dynasty and continuing to build a program that can continue to win championships, and it's really lucky to be a part of something this great. Last year, I was the Little East Conference Defensive Player of the Year, All-Conference Second Team, NCAA Regional MVP of the Regional Tournament, ABC All-Region Honorable Mention and New England Women's Volleyball Association All-Rookie Team and Honorable Mention. I think my favorite game would have to be playing in the Regional Championship last year. We played against a really good Williams team and I think that match, we started off a little shaky and lost the first set we've lost in the whole playoff season. And I think that kind of shook us a little bit. We came back firing and we're ready to go those next couple games. Our coaches are bringing in a lot of really strong girls who want to make a commitment and make and uh, impact in this program, and I think that is why we're continuing to do well and will continue to do well for the next few years. Being a student here has been really awesome as well. I've recently started taking more of my business classes and found that it's a good choice and a good fit for me. And eventually, I hope to open my own business and kind of be successful and do what I love at the end of the day.
Hello and welcome back inside the Clark Athletic Center. I'm Elijah Gonzalez alongside head coach Christina Ball. Coach, a tough one for your team tonight, but what did you think that you guys did well offensively at times? What, what did you think you guys did well offensively at times? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I have to watch the film, but we played hard tonight. Um, I'm just really proud of our effort. You know, that was our bounce back today was winning the effort game. And we weren't perfect. We didn't do everything perfect, but we played really hard for 40 minutes. And, you know, we make some free throws and the game is different. So I'm really just, I'm really proud of our fight tonight. And we had to get back to fighting in order to have a chance down the stretch. And coach, you talk about you're impressed with that effort. Now moving forward, obviously you want to translate that to wins. What's the key in doing that? Is it just that same effort night in and night out or is it continuing that uh, as the season goes on? We have to consistently rebound and we have to consistently help the helper. Um, that wasn't as consistent. We got buried, you know, but I mean, they're a good team, you know, and, and we had a chance down the stretch. So, but you know, there's some things we got to clean up, but I'm really happy with our kids effort tonight and, and that, that'll pay dividends down the road. All right, coach. Well, thank you very much and best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. That's head coach Christina Ball, the UMass Boston Beacons fall tonight by a final score of 73 to 58. We'll step aside one more time. When we come back. We'll have it wrapped up for you right here inside the Clark Athletic Center and get you set for the men's game coming up right here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Looking for Grassi, finds her three, and she's got it. Take care of the basketball, and they have struggled to do that here tonight. Kick out, jumper, good. Sarantino there from the win. Sarantino goes inside. Santaga tries to go up, it's no good. Santagana towards the rim. That one she scores. Able to get it called. Looked like good defense there from the Beacons inside. Going straight up. Now Grassi will try the three, and she nails it. Joey Kusher to the man-to-man -man defense on the backside. They go inside. Thompson defending there, and that time she reached down. It's going to be an and one. Now Jordan. Keckler with it. Ten on the shot clock. Santagata inside, Villard, and a blocking foul and one. Maya Thompson penetrates, tried to kick it cross court. It was taken away for a second. Now it's taken away by Mazik. Mazik down the lane. Mazik layup and scores. Hi, my name's Carl Joseph. I'm currently a criminal justice major. I'm a senior. I am from Brockton, Massachusetts. In basketball, I play small forward slash power forward, and in track, I'm a high jumper. Basketball has always been my first love. The favorite part was probably our win over MIT. Like that, that was tremendous. I almost came to tears just, just from where the program has come from, from when I first came here to where we are now. It's just amazing, and I love it. Honestly, I was recruited for basketball. My high school coach actually emailed the track coach here, and she walked into the gym one day, and it was just like, here, you, come talk to me. And, um, I was on the track team, it really wasn't much of a choice. <laughs> it was a great honor my freshman year just being able to become an All-American, finishing fourth in my first ever national championship meet. It was, it, was quite, it was quite the time of my life. My junior year, we received our LEC championship rings from our sophomore year. Coming in uh, to my freshman year at UMass, I was able to witness the volleyball team win their championship and the, the soccer team and the only thing that I really wanted was a ring of my own. Here's Joseph knifing through. Funny thing is I actually work here as well. I am one of these Zamboni drivers to our men's and women's uh, hockey teams and that's what I do for part time. Being a student here at campus I can honestly tell you is quite different from anywhere else you could possibly go. Just the student body here is amazing. I mean the teachers are amazing. All the teachers that I've had never hesitated to help me out in any way that they could have from extra help to me going into their offices just to talk about what's going on in the classes and to keep me on track. When I, what I want to do when I graduate, I want to go into the police force for a little bit and ultimately end up either working for the Department of Homeland Security or the Department of ICE. It's definitely possible to be a two-sport athlete here at UMass Boston. It's just gonna take a little bit of hard work. Welcome back on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Thank you for joining us here for our women's broadcast. Once again, the UMass Boston Beacons 
They fall here at home tonight to the Eastern Connecticut State Warriors. We take a look at the final numbers quickly as we before we exit before the men's game and looking at those final numbers for UMass Boston. It was a tough stretch down the stretch. Uh, and as you heard from Coach Ball, a couple of free throws here and there. That game could have looked a lot different, but a 72-57 loss as they fall here at home against Eastern Connecticut State. You see the rebounds very even throughout this matchup, but again, for Coach Ball, it was all about her team's effort. Thought they lacked that against Castleton, and here tonight able to kind of bring that back into fruition. And taking a look now at the individual numbers for both these teams, and you start obviously where it all began to start this game with Maya Villard, 24 points for Villard in this contest. Of course, almost a double-double as well. Eight rebounds in this ball game. On the flip side for UMass Boston, the usual suspects. Joey Grassi, 20 points in this one, and Jelani Jackson with 13 to add to her total. Maya Thompson, 10 rebounds before she fouled out of this contest as well. Grassi and Thompson also with two blocks apiece. Well, that'll do it for our final for our final from the Clark Athletic Center. Once again, the final score of the UMass Boston Beacons. They fall by a final of 72-57 to the Eastern Connecticut State Warriors. Make sure you tune in for the action as the men's teams go at it right here beginning at 7.30 on the Beacons Broadcast Network. For our entire broadcast crew, I'm Elijah Gonzalez saying so long. Have a good night, everybody. Hello and welcome inside the Clark Athletic Center as tonight we have a Little East Conference matchup for you as the UMass Boston Beacons take on the Eastern Connecticut State Warriors. Alongside Seth Orensky, I'm Elijah Gonzalez. Let's take a look first at the Little East Conference standings and where both these teams sit. And Seth, of course, Eastern Connecticut State so far has been the class of the Little East Conference once again. But for UMass Boston, this a big game to really allow them to maybe climb back a little bit here in the standings. Well, you see the Beacons in that fifth spot only because of the tiebreakers right now. They're 1-0 against both Plymouth and Rick. Both of those games came at home where they've been a much better team this season. The problem, the last two home games, number one Eastern Connecticut State, number four UMass Dartmouth. So it's going to be a little tough. Still have big road games at Plymouth and Rhode Island College, but if they can somehow pull an upset either today or later on in February against their rival UMass Dartmouth, that'll go a long way. It's the Beacons right on the edge of that top six. Only six teams make it in the new format with nine teams, so you really don't want to find yourselves on the outside looking in after making back-to-back -back conference semifinals like UMass Boston has. And of course, you talk about what Eastern Connecticut State has done over the last few years and taking a look at the all-time series between these two teams. It's been a stretch where UMass Boston hasn't been able to get those wins as of late. Of course, the Beacons' last win coming all the way back in 2009. But Seth, this is a team coming in for UMass Boston when they're on, this is one of the better teams that we've seen for UMass Boston. Well, it, it's such a streaky team. The, the issue with this UMass Boston team is they're young, extremely young. Dayson Sinelli's the only player on the team who's been with the Beacons for multiple seasons in a row at least. And the other issue is they're a very poor shooting team. So they can shoot the ball well. We've seen them shoot 50% from the field. They hit 75% of their free throws the other day for the first time. So when they get going, they can put up 15, 20 points in a five-minute span. The issue is we've also seen them put up 10, 12 points in a 10-minute span, and that's been the issue, and that's going to be a real issue against an Eastern Connecticut State team that is just so efficient. That's been the calling card of Bill Geithner's teams in Eastern. Extremely efficient, very athletic, and they always have at least one of the top players in the conference, and this year it's the fantastic point guard, Carlos Gonzalez. And of course, we talked about Carlos Gonzalez, but taking a look at what they do on the season for both of these teams, it's really been a stretch where UMass Boston, like you said, very streaky. But on the flip side, for Eastern Connecticut State, they've been one of the more consistent teams as you take a look at the numbers. Yeah, I mean, they're top two in about half the categories in the conference. The one issue that they have 
is their rebounding. Not that they've been a little bit suspect there, sitting sixth out of nine teams, but a very good scoring offense and scoring defense. See there for UMass Boston, they're on the plus side. They shoot the ball okay from the field, but that three-point field goal percentage amongst uh, the bottom of the conference, along with the free throw percentage, the one issue, one area they should have the advantage is the rebounding margin. They're a very scrappy team. All five guys rebound, and they finally have a little bit of size under head coach Jason Harris in his fourth season. We've talked about this team forcing 20-plus turnovers in a lot of games, but on the flip side, Coach Harris has talked with us about this multiple times. They need to be more cautious with the basketball. They turn it over a lot. So we take a look at those team leaders, some of those guards that could have big games, including uh, Michael Boyd, a guy who can score the basketball in a multitude of ways, and he gets some help down low from Javaris Hill. Javaris Hale has been a really big addition for UMass Boston. Really nice four, sometimes plays the five. Very efficient around the hoop, likes to get out in transition. Boyd, a lot of people know him, the reigning Little East Conference Rookie of the Year, but I think the Beacons go as Alex Sanchez, Charlie, and Charles Mitchell go. Those are the big three for the Beacons. Sometimes streaky players, but all of them can score. On the other side, Carlos Gonzalez and Jake Colligan may be the best backcourt in the Little East. Well, as we take a look at our matchup to watch tonight, you mentioned Charlie Mitchell and Colligan as well. These two guys really a little bit different in their styles of play, but both guys vital uh, to the offense for both these teams. Yeah, I mean, Colligan's a, a pure scorer, had 17, including 12 in the second half the first time these two teams played. Charlie Mitchell is chaos in a body. He is all over the floor, and typically it's very good chaos. Forcing turnovers, getting out in transition, loves to take the ball to the paint despite his diminutive size but sometimes he is a little bit careless with the basketball, just like a lot of the Beacons guards are. Well, for UMass Boston, as we take a look quickly at the starting lineups for both of these teams in Eastern Connecticut State, we talked about what Colligan can do and Carlos Gonzalez as well, uh, but this is an Eastern Connecticut State group with a, t with a lot of talent as well. Yeah, I mean, this Eastern team, they always have some very big and active bigs. Corey Muckle stands at 6'4", Seth Thomas at 6'4", Lionel Hyatt is at 6'6", 220, so they have some prototypical size that you'd love to have, especially at this level where typically you don't get a lot of six foot six, six seven guys with skill. And the Beacons, they'll bring out Charlie Mitchell, who brought the ball up, Sanchez, along with Javaris Hill and Michael Boyd and Dason Sinelli, that one out of bounds off the hands of Sinelli, and right away we see a turnover from the Beacons. And, and that's frustrating because it's a good look. I mean, Sinelli has inside position there on Thomas, despite the fact he's giving up some size. Such a good jumper that he'd probably get a good look, but unable to make the initial catch off a really nice look from Javaris Hill, who typically isn't the guy up top feeding the bigs down low. Off the screen, and inside quickly they go, and the reverse layup is up and good from the freshman Seth Thomas. Weak side help wasn't there. Hill has to get over a little bit faster, but two beacons went with the ball, and that led a wide open Thomas to be getting downhill. So Boyd now looking to try to respond. Again, this UMass Boston team, a couple of games where turnovers have been a problem, but they've, as you mentioned, found ways to score in a few games this year. Sinelli to the rim, and that one he floats and scores. And, and that's what Sinelli has been doing as of late. He's a little bit less fearless than he was to start the season. His, Mitchell nearly has the steal, and he's just so aggressive. The last five games, he's been one of the Beacon's top scorers because he's showing a little bit of that more confidence he had as a sophomore. Carlos Gonzalez gives it off. Inside they go, and they throw it away. Looking that time for Hyatt, and once again, we see what they try to do. They try to get it into those bigs, but... Again, UMass Boston, a scrappy defensive team, as we talked about. Well, the Beacons are used to being undersized, so it's all about positioning. It's about the help defense and denying that entry pass for UMass Boston. Guys on the bench, Malik Lorquette and Mark Monroe, the two guys they've gone to in situations where they need to go big. But they like to go with this four-guard set around Javaris Hill, who can score like a guard. And now Sinelli penetrates down the lane, kicked it out to Boyd, swing to Sanchez, the three, and he's got it. Love the extra pass from Michael Boyd. Sinelli passing from the paint, a little bit of a surprise there. Caught Eastern off guard and a nice extra pass for Sanchez, who's one of the Beacon's best statistical three-point shooters at just under 30%. Into the high post, they hand it off. Gonzalez tries the three, it's no good. And it's grabbed by Javaris Hill. And here comes UMass Boston the other way. Not a team that will get out and transition a ton, but they can score in that facet. And Sanchez, quick 
trigger that time. Maybe a heat check there, and it's no good. And now Colligan with it. Colligan talked about a pure score. There it is right there. And Colligan, he doesn't stand that tall at six foot, but he has that size advantage over Sanchez with the Beacons going small in the backcourt and just able to rise up and hit a nice mid-range jumper. Well, Colligan going from one talented program to another. Spent a couple of years, spent one at Keene State, then moves over to Eastern Connecticut State program that has had a lot of success as well. Boyd had that one stripped away. Colligan hits the deck and takes it away. Gonzalez almost had that one stripped by Sanchez. Instead gets it off to Thomas. It's no good. And it's out of bounds off the hand of Charlie Mitchell. And it'll stay with the Warriors. And that's a lost possession because Dayson Sinelli didn't go to the floor. If he goes to the floor there, at worst you're looking at a tie-up. Said Eastern got a good look and the Beacons fortunate to only be still defending. Really interesting substitution for the Beacons. Kareem Octavian typically only plays when the Beacons are in a blowout one way or another. Gets the early sub for Charlie Mitchell. Well, we see that he's probably going to be the guy to pester the very talented guard in Jake Colligan. Off the screen for Gonzalez and dribbled it off his foot. Again, they forced turnovers. Yeah, that was interesting. Gonzalez had a step on Sanchez, but just a bit too strong right off the left toe. It was interesting. When Gonzalez came into the gym, he was the first guy in for Eastern, and he immediately went over to Michael Boyd, Dayson Sinelli, Alex Sanchez. Those guys have a pretty good relationship. You don't see a lot of visiting teams come over and immediately check on how guys are doing, but he seemed to be pretty close to a lot of the Beacon's older guys, the sophomores. Layup is good from Alex Sanchez. He's been such a difference maker for UMass Boston's ability to get to the hoop. All it takes is that little hesitation from the defender and he's already by them. Coach Harris talks about Sanchez's work ethic, both on and off the floor. Colligan to the rim. Floats and can't get it to go, but there's the tip by Hyatt. Nice job by Hyatt from the weak side, but if you're Kareem Octavian, you have one job, and it's to slow down Colligan. That was too easy for Colligan to get to the rim. UMass Boston holding the slim lead. Hill trying to penetrate that left baseline. He's fouled and can't get that one to drop, but he'll go to the line, and quickly we're seeing Javaris Hill try and make an impact on this game. 15-44, we'll take a break. UMass Boston in front early on top of the Eastern Connecticut State Warriors on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Endurance and speed. Incredible power. This trophy is not given. It must be earned. The NCAA Division III Men's and Women's Indoor Track and Field Championships. March 8th and 9th at the Reggie Lewis Center in Boston. Visit NCAA.com slash tickets to secure your seats today. Welcome back inside the Clark Athletic Center. Elijah Gonzalez, Seth Lorensky alongside. And take a look at the keys to the game for both these teams and really for UMass Boston. Again, we talked about turnovers and how that has been a, a problem for them at times. Already seen them force a couple of turnovers on Gonzalez, but again, for UMass Boston, the start and then continuing that as this game goes along. So often for UMass Boston against these top programs, these King State, these Easterns, even out of conference against Tufts, the Beacons dig themselves an early hole and they're never able to fully get out of it. The first time down at Eastern, UMass Boston took the first two points and then gave up 15 in a row. They never got it closer to 10 points the rest of the way. And then balanced scoring. I mean, we've seen Dayson Sinelli go off, Tavares Hill has gone off, but we don't see the Beacons have enough games where there's three, four guys in double digits where the defense really has to focus on all five guys on the floor. First free throw is no good from Javaris Hill, and this has been a spot where UMass Boston has wanted to improve when it comes to the free throw shooting. Javaris Hill's second free throw, that one is no good. Hill came in under 70% from the line. And now UMass Boston looking to try and cause some havoc with some traps, but giving out an open look that time for Muckle. Yeah, that's just a nice take from Muckle, who stands as if he's a four or a five, but clearly has some good abilities away from the basket. That was an NBA distance three-pointer. Shooting about 34% from beyond the arc this year. We'll see what UMass Boston has drawn up out of that media timeout. 
Had some momentum going into it, but stagnant offensively. That one taken away and given up. And now Muckle the other way. Hell just telegraphed the fact that he wanted to go to the basket. Great pass inside, and the layup is no good. That time it looked like Thomas was looking for the goal 10, but I think Javaris Hill got a piece before it hit that backboard. Yeah, it was really close. Thomas took a little bit too long to let go of the basket. Sanchez with the layup, and again, his ability to score at the rim has been impressive so far this year. Sanchez with a lot of speed, and he's able to create off the dribble. Just that one hesitation dribble to get the defender sleeping, and then he goes hard to the basket. Foul is going to go on Hill, and an and one for Hyatt. Lionel Hyatt, one of those veteran leaders for this group. He's played in 19 games this year, 30 games just a season ago for Eastern Connecticut State. Free throw is up and good from Hyatt. During those 30 games, he averaged about five points a game, but the numbers starting to go up for Hyatt this year. 7.1 points per game, but big numbers in the rebounding department at about 6.8 per game. As Octavian gives it up to Sanchez. Sinelli pump fakes, kicks to the corner. Octavian a three. No good. Grabbed on the miss by Gonzalez. This is not what UMass Boston wants is Carlos Gonzalez with time and space, and he finds Thomas there. Yeah, and a mismatch down low with Octavian. I'm not sure why Kareem, what Kareem has done in practice to earn these minutes, because we haven't seen him in the rotation. Colligan's on the bench right now, and or at least he's not the guy that Octavian is necessarily matching up against. No good there from Michael Boyd, and Gonzalez quickly out in transition. Gives it up, great pass inside to Muckle, and a timeout going to be taken by Coach Harris, a much needed one here. Yeah, I mean, Eastern is going to the same tried and true method time and time again. That little slip screen, the Beacons are not matching up in transition. There's a wide open big down low, and this is something that UMass Boston, you have to be able to pick up, even if you're giving up size, even if it's Alex Sanchez on the big, you at least have to put one body on him, and the Beacons have had three or four possessions in the last five or six where there's been a big wide open for an easy basket. For UMass Boston, they're led by head coach Jason Harris in his fourth season with the club. And Seth, we've talked about what Coach Harris has meant to this team and what they've what he's continued to do with this program. But again, you mentioned their back-to-back -back performances in the postseason. And again, this is a team that is very young and still has a lot of talent left for the next couple of years. Yeah, the, the benefit for UMass Boston is they have just one senior on the roster, Rob Nalcimento, who's a vocal leader for this team, but doesn't see all that many minutes. The problem for UMass Boston is they have to prove they can get over the hump with this group. And that one just thrown away by Sinelli. It'll go out of bounds, and Sanchez quickly checks back in. He'll replace Octavian. And now starting to see the guards having to rotate a lot. But for Eastern Connecticut State, they're not a team that will go very deep with the guard play. So see if UMass Boston, especially with that full court press, can apply some maybe tired turnovers, you could call them. Well, you just have to put pressure on Gonzalez at all times as there's another big three from Muckle. Gonzalez is coming off a 35-point game in which he had five assists. Really just dominated Plymouth State and led them single-handedly to the win. UMass Boston knows that. They have to see if they can tire him out, but also just get in his head a little bit. Force someone else to beat you like Muckle. To the rim, Boyd. Met at the rim by Muckle, it's no good. Gets his own miss, and that time he scores it. Nice job following up the missed shot. Boyd doing a nice job with the pivot foot, moving it without committing the turnover, and able to finish amongst the trees. Carlos Gonzalez, a career night in one, more ways than one. 35 career points, and also surpassed the 1,000-point mark as Colligan travels there, and we'll see the first time that Malik Lorquette We'll check in. He'll replace Sinelli. Again, we've seen a couple of different guys off the bench for UMass Boston. And one guy that has really impressed thus far has been Alex Sanchez here in this game for UMass Boston. It's been the main point of this scoring here in this one. Boyd off the screen. Lost the basketball. Another UMass Boston turnover and another UMass Boston foul. 
and an unforced turnover. Michael was trying to pull the ball back in, just dropped it into the hands of the Warriors. The Beacons have had three really sloppy turnovers, and down by eight points, this is what Eastern does to you. They're not doing anything spectacular or over the top. Smart plays on offense, doing a nice job of at least keeping a body in front of a player on defense, and they just slowly pull away from the Beacons. UMass Boston needs a spark right now, and I'm a little surprised Charles Mitchell's at the end of the bench. He can be that spark, one of the Beacons' better three-point shooters, a guy who can provide some instant offense, but we haven't seen him off the bench. Instead, it was Kareem Octavian, the first guard for the Beacons. And for UMass Boston, again, we talked about what they have at that guard position, but again, down low, it might come down to maybe getting some stops on the interior, and one of those guys that we've seen play a little bit and have some some bright moments, as you could say, has been Malik Lorquette at times. Lorquette is hot and cold. He's very much a freshman in that he's still learning some of his post moves. Sometimes he shows a little bit of tentativeness, but when he's on, he's a strong rebound, a threat to get block shots, at least to alter shots, and he's got a couple of post moves that when he's showing that confidence, he's able to finish. So hopefully the Beacons get the good version of Lorquette today against an Eastern team that has a couple of different options in the front court. So now we'll see a couple of substitutions for Eastern Connecticut as Nunez comes in, one of the veteran guards off the bench for them. Give it over to Gonzalez. He'll try a three and he knocks it down right in the face of Charlie Mitchell. So smooth and such a quick release, Mitchell was not giving him too much space, and he was just able to pull up and drain it over Mitchell. That's such a difficult play to defend unless you have a big size advantage over the crafty point guard. Now it's Mitchell. Gives it off to Hill. Had to catch that pass a long way out, but again, Javaris Hill, a multitude of ways to score. I mean, Jar Javaris Hill is one of the few beacons who can really win a one-on-one -on -one ISO on offense. The only issue is... He's telegraphing that move, and if an Eastern player comes over with the double team, it's likely going to at least force a pass, if not a turnover. Long shot from Muckle that time is no good. Mitchell saves and dives it. That one up to Sanchez, taken away, though, by Gonzalez. Another turnover. Gonzalez the other way. Splits the D, finds Thomas inside, and one for Seth Thomas. Phenomenal defensive play, great job to weave his way through traffic and then so unselfish, recognizing Thomas is wide open. Lorquette goes for the ball, easy play, and then Lorquette gives the foul, trying to scramble back into position. This is why Gonzalez is so talented and why Eastern is once again sitting atop the conference. They have that senior leader, that star player who looks for his teammates as much as he looks for himself. Well, and you want to know that a guy who won defensive player of the year ago not normally known for offense, but Carlos Gonzalez definitely excluded from that category as the layup is good from Sanchez on the back end. Doing a great job using the basket to make it more difficult to block his shot. And he's just so quick. That's the one thing that sets him apart because he's obviously giving up size to almost every player on the floor. Sanchez guarding tightly. Jumper is no good that time from Nunez. And it's quickly given off to Mitchell. Mitchell. Trying to go behind the back, almost lost it. He's going to come off the screen, gives it off to Boyd. Boyd going to try a three. He's been quiet tonight. It's no good. And the rebound grabbed by Thomas. He'll push quickly. And a foul is called on Javaris Hill. And what's made this turn into more of an up-and-down track meet is the fact that all five guys for both teams on the floor can really bring the basketball up and score coast-to-coast. -coast. Yeah, th there's no... There's no bigs who are plotting out there for either side. Even Malik Lorquette and Lidl Thomas, they want to run, and that's a bad foul for the Beacons. Javaris Hill in transition. There's guys back. He picks up his second, and he's a guy who creates a unique matchup for the Beacons offensively. Off the screen comes Gonzalez to the rim, and he floats it in. What can't this guy do? Lorquette came over, altered the shot maybe a little bit, but Gonzalez, just a beautiful little touch. He has done pretty much everything today for Eastern offensively and defensively. Mitchell down the lane, and he scores. Right now, 
both teams at will driving to the basket and getting some pretty easy buckets. Yeah, the issue for UMass Boston is they're not getting enough stops, and when they do, they're not answering with the basket. Beacons have been struggling to cut into this deficit that's been hovering just shy of 10 points. Nunez. Look to pull up instead. Colligan tries a quick trigger, and he's got it from deep. Another sweet stroke. Both of these guys in the backcourt make it look really easy from distance. Mitchell pulls it back out. Double-digit lead for the Warriors. That one almost thrown away. It is thrown away. Looks like Gonzalez may have got a hand on it, but referee says no, and it will go the other direction. 12-point advantage. you got to think that this ball is going to touch the hand of Gonzalez or Colligan at some point in this possession. Instead, Thomas slips to the lane and scores. Beautiful execute, execution there. Thomas sliding to the basket. And again, the Beacons just shifting a little bit late. Lorquette going for the shot block. But if you can just get in a better position there, you don't need the block. Just need to get a body in front. Now Hill's going to head to the scorer's table already with two fouls. Boyd down the lane, switches hands and scores. Michael Boyd, talk about a guy with a versatile layup package. He's one of those guys. When he gets to the rim, there's so many things that he can do. The floater, saw there, switching of the hands, go both ways. And just, one of the reasons he's so impressive. Just able to really hang up near the rim for a while, and that makes it difficult and on defenders. They'll go up for the shot block, and he's able to readjust in midair. Inside they go quickly to Thomas, but he traveled with it. Took an extra step. Javaris Hill will come in, and we'll see a couple of different substitutions. Donnie Craig will check in, but we'll have a break here inside the Clark Athletic Center. Double-digit lead for the Warriors as we step aside on the Beacons Broadcast Network. People at UMass Boston, they're here because they know they can have an impact, not just on research, but on people, on their students. This is just a starting point. It only has potential to grow, and it has a big potential to grow up. You're really having a direct impact on people's lives, and you can see that now, and you can see that years from now. So I think it's becoming like the place that people want to go. What UMass Boston is able to offer to its young people it certainly stands up to that mission that was set right out in the beginning. It's something UMass Boston should be and can be very proud about. Welcome back inside the Clark Athletic Center. Elijah Gonzalez, Seth Orensky alongside UMass Boston, trailing by a score of 31-19. Here at home, the Beacons looking to make some adjustments defensively, offensively. Numbers haven't been staggering, but haven't been bad thus far. They've gotten a couple of good looks, including that one by Sanchez, but can't get it to roll in. And now the Warriors come the other way. Nunez guarded tightly by Boyd. Haven't seen a ton of transition baskets thus far from the Warriors. That's something they have taken pride in a couple of the last few games. That one no good from Craig and grabbed away by Sinelli. Might have got a piece of it too. And now Boyd. Boyd looking to create. Tried to draw the foul there, but nothing called. Colligan hits the deck and he traveled with it. So the Beacons have now forced a, a turnover, a missed shot, but unable to really get anything going on top of that. I mean, the issue is Eastern's not going to have many empty position, possessions. So they're going to wipe up the floor. UMass Boston has to score off these. I think Boyd forced that shot really early in the shot clock. Yes, if you think you get the contact, but you better be pretty sure because that makes the shot a lot more difficult. Now off the forced turnover, let's see what the Beacons draw up, see if they can maybe get an easy basket with the player going to the basket or an easy three-point look. Well, it's all about drawing that Oscar nominee, too, if you want the call. And a five-second call by UMass Boston. So the exact opposite of what you're looking to do. Eastern has done a really nice job executing offensively, but also 
they're doing enough. They're just keeping bodies in front. They haven't done anything special defensively, but the Beacons have kind of shot themselves in the foot a couple times. Colley and off the screen. Kicks it inside, and they lost it out of bounds. So that's three straight possessions without a basket for Eastern. Can the Beacons just get one basket during this three-possession stretch? Well, it's not starting off well, considering nobody went back to get the ball from Charlie Mitchell, but they finally get it to him and get it in bounds. UMass Boston, one of the teams that brings the full court pressure, but Eastern Connecticut State just deciding when they want to, not a team that will press you a ton. Hill penetrates, lost it, Sinelli gets it back. He'll go into Hyatt and he's fouled, and Hyatt can't believe it, but I think that might have been the right call on that last play. Well, it's interesting, the referee underneath was going for the jump ball. The referee closest to us called the foul. I thought it should have been a jump. It looked pretty clean, but the Beacons are going to hopefully take advantage with at least one made free throw. Free throw by Sinelli is good. Head coach Bill Geithner in his 17th year, and he was talking with the official, and the official telling him, hey, he brought his hands down. That's what they're going to call. The reason for the foul, Sinelli's free throw is good, and it's two for two from the line, and now here comes the time where UMass Boston has had times where they made stops, but this being one of them where they really need one desperately to try and cut this to an under double-digit game. Nunez down the lane, floats, it's no good, and Javaris Hill may have tipped that one in on his own. Yeah, it was definitely a beacon's hand. There were two beacons there, Sinelli and Hill, were in front and boxing out the Eastern player, but it goes off a of beacon's hand and in. Mitchell trying to penetrate. Colligan will pick up the foul. And a couple of substitutes set to come in for Eastern Connecticut State. As Muckle checks back in along with Thomas. And Eastern Connecticut State, a 9 and 1 mark so far. Trying to pace their mark just a year ago at 13 and 1 in conference play. And of course, made an appearance in the NCAA tournament. Had a positive result in that appearance. As Hill spins in the lane and gets it with the left hand. That's why the Beacons have to leave him out there with those two fouls. He's just so valuable on both sides of the floor. Gonzalez pressured by Boyd. Now Sanchez pestering Colligan, and that one knocked out of bounds. And this might be the move that Coach Jason Harris has to go to. Alex Sanchez, very tough defensively. And right now you put a bigger guy in Michael Boyd on Carlos Gonzalez, maybe give him a different look. Yeah, and Boyd's one of the Beacon's better on-ball defenders. He really enjoys the task of playing guys like Gonzalez or Ty Nichols at Keene State. That one blocked away and grabbed by Sinelli. Good defense that time by the Beacons. Colligan tried to go into three of them. Might have been trying to look for the foul, but nothing there. Sinelli goes inside, and we've got a foul on Malik Lorquette. They're going to give the push off, and well, I think I think Seth Thomas might have drew that one with a Oscar-winning performance. A little bit of acting there, but also from Lorquette. I don't think he needed to give as much of an elbow there. He had the position, and Thomas was not aware of the fact that there wasn't a lot of help defense behind him. If Sinelli releases that ball earlier, Lorquette just doesn't influence it as much. It's probably going to be two points, and instead, Eastern, another one of those slip screens where the Beacons are late to react. So now Mitchell brings the basketball up the floor. Sanchez gives it off. Sinelli kicked out to Boyd. Got to find a way to get him going offensively as Boyd. Looking to create one-on-one. -on -one. Gives it off. Now Mitchell's turn. Pull up. No good. Rebound tipped around. Grabbed by Lorquet. Inside. Turned over. The other way comes the Warriors. Nobody picks up Gonzalez. Inside. Thomas lays it in. And one. Carlos Gonzalez was not picked up, and that cannot make head coach Jason Harris happy for the Beacons. No, but Sinelli's foul also is frustrating because, again, that's the second time where Gonzalez has gone all the way. The Beacons' big has reacted, moved over to the ball, and then they're late to attack the shot looking for the block shot. Instead of getting a piece of the ball, you're giving a possible three-point play, and this kind of feels like a broken record. Anytime Gonzalez is going to do that, the Beacons 
need to recognize, hey, it might be better to just let him take a slightly contested shot rather than over-pursue. All of a sudden, it's an easy dish off and an easy basket and a potential free throw. A 14-point lead right now for Eastern Connecticut State, and it's been an impressive performance thus far for the Warriors. But you look at what the Warriors have done offensively, and again, for Carlos Gonzalez, it's just being a veteran leader on this team, and that's, again, this is a veteran team and a veteran group that has really excelled in that capacity with that veteran leadership. It all starts with Bill Geithner. I feel like every single year you see slightly different pieces. He typically has a couple of very long bigs, whether they're very talented offensive or not, they're going to be able to rebound a little bit. They're good defensively. And he always has one or two star guards. Last year was Tarchi Brown. I mean, this team has been so consistent the last five or six years in the conference because it starts at the top and they always have these senior leaders. And yes, Gonzalez is to be a senior, but you have to like what you have in Colligan, who's been maybe not playing on the ball as much, but he's been showing that same kind of smart execution, making the right decisions for this Eastern team. For Eastern Connecticut State, they have only fallen this year uh, four times, and none of those have been back-to-back -back losses. Swing to Gonzalez. Might have needed one more extra pass, but instead he'll fire it up quickly. It's no good. And Craig skied in for the rebound, but it was ripped away by Michael Boyd. Boyd swings it to the near side. This one brought back out. And reset for Mitchell. Mitchell guarded by Colligan. Anzi St. Germain checks in his first minutes. Mitchell, four on the shot clock, short off the front rim, barely got the rim, and now pushed quickly by Thomas to Gonzalez. Handoff inside Colligan. Tried to go back to Thomas and almost threw it away. Thomas pulls it back out, reset for the Warriors. And again, an interesting substitution for the Beacons. Yancey St. Germain, another guy who doesn't see a ton of minutes. Charles Mitchell in uniform today, but isn't yet to play. Three-pointer by Craig, no good. Rebound grabbed by Javaris Hill. Boyd gives it up to Sanchez. He's been quiet as of late here in this first half. Hill kicked it out, turned it over. The other way comes Craig. Gonzalez kicks it out. Colligan was open, run off the three-point line. The jumper no good. That might have been a good smart play there by Charlie Mitchell. 100%. Instead of giving a good three-point shooter a look, at least he funnels him into the paint and forces a two-point effort. There's a tough shot by Boyd, it's no good. Rebound grabbed by Hill. Hill with a mismatch, trying to create, and it's gonna be a blocking foul on Donnie Craig. Feels like there's very few guys on the floor right now that can get in the way of Javaris Hill. No, but the benefit there for Craig is he recognized that he had help behind him. All he was doing was trying to stay in front of Hill, who has been able to generate some looks, has been able to get to the hoop, but he's also turned it over a couple times when he's been forced to try to dish it out, and Craig had this steal the previous possession. Sinelli comes in. He'll replace Charlie Mitchell. Given back to the top of the arc with Boyd. Boyd penetrating inside, tries to go up. It's no good. Was tipped out by Hill, and it might have went fallen right into the hands of Boyd. Kick cross court. Muckle going to try a three. No good, and grabbed by Sanchez the other way. Up and down track meet continues as Sanchez looks to penetrate on Muckle. Goes up and scores and one for Alex Sanchez. I don't know how he was able to convert there. Drew a lot of contact from Muckle. And it was a really difficult angle there running away from the basket. Sanchez now has nine, I believe, a chance for ten. He's really, he and Hill are the only two guys who have been able to consistently get good looks for UMass Boston. So Sanchez now at the line. Talk about a competitor. He's been a guy that has had that throughout his career. That one is good from Alex Sanchez. And UMass Boston with about a minute 35 to go. Trail by 11. But for the Beacons, it's just finding a way to get stops. It's not going to be one there as Seth Thomas backdoor cut open for the layup. Again, it's too easy. Yes, Yancey St. Germain just into the game. He's giving up a little size on Thomas, but you have to be able to react to that, get a hand in the lane. Don't let them get that easy look. 
Here's a deep three by Sanchez, no good. And it's quickly pushed up the floor by Gonzalez. Gonzalez down the lane, lays it up. It's no good on the reverse, and Sinelli grabs the miss. Sinelli trying to pull that back out. Gives it off to Boyd, and it's going to be a foul on Thomas. This will send, will not send UMass Boston to the line just yet. And a substitution set to come as looks like Octavian will check in once again for St. Germain. Six team foul now for Eastern. Both teams one foul away from the bonus. It's been a pretty clean game here in the first half. It's been a very quick moving first half as well. Not a ton of stoppages. And now under a minute to go, Michael Boyd. Trying to go inside. They have offered a lot of help side on Javaris Hill in the interior. Skip pass to Sanchez. He'll try the three. No good off the back rim. And they're giving that weak side three-pointer for UMass Boston. Well, they're giving it, and the Beacons made it more difficult there. If Sinelli hits Sanchez with his feet set, he's already in position. Said he has to slide over a little bit. Then the players running in his face made it a much more difficult look. There's a turnover on the other side by Eastern Connecticut State. There has been some sloppy basketball at times for both these teams and for Eastern Connecticut State. And as Colligan comes out, you look at what this team has done. I think the majority of their turnover is just unforced errors. I mean, that was another one of those times where the big slip into the basket just couldn't quite make the catch. Otherwise, he'd have an easy two. I don't think Bill Gunner's going to be happy with the turnovers, but at least they've been within the flow of the offense. Under 10 to play, Sanchez off the screen, kicks it, Octavian, pump fake, gives it off, Sinelli going to try it at the buzzer, no good off the back rim, that does it for the first half, UMass Boston trailing by 13, but again, another good look that just doesn't go down. Yeah, I mean, that's tough, there's such a big difference mentally between being down 13 and being down 10 at the break. I like the fact that Octavian kicked it out there. He had the look, recognizes that sinelli has been seeing some more minutes today. He has his offensive game going. Had a nice one the other night against Castleton. Sinelli, though, just a little bit strong, and that's been the issue for UMass Boston all season long. They have not been consistent enough from distance or the free throw line. The Beacons didn't have that many looks today from the free throw line, but every single one of those three points left to the charity stripe or wide open threes you miss, those are going to add up against a team like Eastern that executes so efficiently. So UMass Boston trailing at the half 39-26. We'll step aside when we come back. We'll have Coach Jason Harris right here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Once again, UMass Boston trailing at the half by 13. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. I'm the first undergraduate alumnus to uh, lead this university. I'm very proud. Welcome back inside the Clark Athletic Center. We thank you for tuning into our broadcast of UMass Boston men's basketball. I'm Elijah Gonzalez, and I'm now joined by head coach Jason Harris. Coach, in the first half, they had solid offensive numbers. What do you guys need to do defensively to slow down their offense? Well, stop turning the ball over. Stop taking bad shots because they're getting points in conversion, and you can't guard those. And they absolutely have at least 13, and that's the difference right now. So I think it's more of our offense. And then team defense, you're right. I mean, East. They're a pretty good team, and they're going to make you pay every time you have a breakdown. It's similar to game one. You know, you have one breakdown, they're going to make you pay, and that's what 91 teams do. And, Coach, you talked about uh, offensively for you guys trying to limit the turnovers. What's the key to doing that in that second half? You know, execute. I thought in the first couple possessions of the game, we executed, and then we had a few misses, and we kind of went away from it. And that's we got to get back to that. 
Uh, and then again, you know, you got to get stops. And if you get stops and rebound, and you're able to run, and you're able to get some easier shots, you, you know, you're, it's amazing how you, those other shots fall for you. So too many turnovers, not enough free throws. All right, Coach. Well, thank you very much, and best of luck in the second half. Thanks. That's head coach Jason Harris, the UMass Boston Beacons, trailing here at the halftime break. We come back, we'll have halftime statistics for you right here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. business management major from Edina, Minnesota. I love being a part of this volleyball team. Volleyball is what brought me to UMass Boston. I looked at our recruiting website one last time and saw UMass Boston on it, came out for a visit the next week, and it kind of hit all the boxes that I was looking for. In a good city, good academic school, good volleyball program, it had everything I wanted. Although it was far away from home, I knew this is where I wanted to be. Winning six back-to-back -back LEC titles is really a dynasty, I think, and Terry has really focused hard on recruiting and building this dynasty and continuing to build a program that can continue to win championships, and it's really lucky to be a part of something this great. Last year, I was the Little East Conference Defensive Player of the Year, All-Conference Second Team, NCAA Regional MVP of the Regional Tournament, ABC All-Region Honorable Mention and New England Women's Volleyball Association All-Rookie Team and Honorable Mention. I think my favorite game would have to be playing in the regional championship last year. We played against a really good Williams team and I think that match we started off a little shaky and lost the first set we would lost in the whole playoff season and I think that kind of shook us a little bit. We came back firing and we're ready to go those next couple games. Our coaches are bringing in a lot of really strong girls who want to make a commitment and make and uh, impact in this program, and I think that is why we're continuing to do well and we will continue to do well for the next few years. Being a student here has been really awesome as well. I've recently started taking more of my business classes and I found that it's a good choice and a good fit for me. And eventually, I hope to open my own business and kind of be successful and do what I love at the end of the day. Welcome back inside the Clark Athletic Center. Elijah Gonzalez, Seth Lorensky alongside. It's a 39-26 lead for Eastern Connecticut State here at the halftime break. And take a look at the halftime numbers. And Seth, you start at the three-point shooting for UMass Boston, just 13%. And we talked about it during the contest so far in this first half. With all the help side on Javaris Hill, that skip pass is there if they start knocking down some that could put them right back in this game. Yeah, the Beacons hit one of their first three pointers and then finished one for eight. That's a big difference because Eastern four for eight and that's nine points of the 13 point deficit. I mean, UMass Boston, we keep talking about streaky and streaky typically isn't a good term. You don't want to be called a streaky team. You want to be called consistent or a good shooting team, uh, but it can turn into a positive if the Beacons can knock down some of those open looks. That's clearly what Eastern has decided that's the way to beat UMass Boston. Let them shoot their way out of the game. The other thing is the free throw line has just been bad. I mean, Eastern 1 of 3, but the Beacons 3 of 5. The Beacons need to feast at the free throw line with some of their guys who are able to get to the basket. They need to be getting Eastern into some foul trouble. They also just need to be getting to the free throw line. Even though they're not going to hit a ton of those, it, it just puts the other team in a little bit of a scramble. It'll open up those three-point looks as well. 
And overall, I mean, just look at those numbers for Eastern. 55% from the field, 17 of 31. This team has 11 assists versus seven turnovers, and, and that's the sign of a really good team. They're moving the ball well. On the other side, the Beacons have two assists to 11 turnovers. It's a little bit been too much of the hero ball. We've seen it with Javaris Hill. We've seen it with Sanchez, kind of like James Harden. These guys are having to manufacture their own baskets. They're not moving the ball well enough to open up looks. Yeah, just a lot of standing around during that first half for UMass Boston offensively. But again, you mentioned it on the assist to turnover ratio. That's a statistic where a very talented senior-led and experience-led guard team for Eastern Connecticut State has had their prowess. But you take a look at the team leaders from this game so far, and it's been the usual suspects for UMass Boston, including Alex Sanchez. Of course, Javaris Hill also uh, starting to pour in some numbers. But for Eastern Connecticut State, when you get 14 points out of Seth Thomas and a half and you get eight out of Corey Muckle, you're in very good shape with Carlos Gonzalez also contributing five assists. Well, the tough part is Thomas is 7 of 9, Muckles 3 of 5, including 2 of 3 from deep. They're doing it because they're getting easy looks. It's not to say that those guys aren't talented. They're very talented. But they're doing it because Gonzalez is opening up space for them. Colligan's drawing extra attention. They're able to just breeze to the basket for easy, uh, easy layups or wide open three-point shots. And the Beacons need to do a better job of playing a little bit of one-on-one -on -one defense, not allowing Gonzalez to get to the basket. That's got to be the first thing defensively. In transition, you pick up Gonzalez, you deny him entry into the paint because otherwise it's going to be points, whether it's Gonzalez or Gonzalez dishing it off to a wide-open big. We take a look at some of the highlights from this first half, and really, Seth, it was totaled by a lot of execution early for UMass Boston. Heard Coach Harris talk about it, but then... You flip it around and just not being able to execute defensively with a lot of buckets that came from the uh, from the Warriors. Yeah, there was the early three from Sanchez. The Beacons didn't hit another one over the final 18 minutes. And this is a nice little take. The hook shot and the foul. That was foul number one on Hill, who has two. Not a lot of foul trouble for either side. That's the deep three from Muckle, really showing off his range. Boyd is there, just not enough. And then Gonzalez all the way to the hoop. Oh, look, I've got a friend. And there's the end one. The Beacons have committed the foul twice on those, and that's just a foul you got to be smart enough not to give. And there's another nice take from Eastern as they stretch the lead out. The Beacons were close for maybe 5-10, and then Eastern just able to push it into double digits. That was the second time where Gonzalez got to the hoop. Beacons able to cut into it a little bit as their defense improved. This is a really nice take from Alex Sanchez late in the half. If not for the fact that the Beacons got stops at one point on six of seven, maybe six of eight uh, possessions for Eastern. This could be a 20-point game. The, the defense improved a little bit. Still too many N1, still too many threes, but the offense just hasn't been able to generate consistently enough all season, and especially in this first half. Well, and you heard Coach Harris say when I asked him if it was going to be something defensively they needed to change, he talked about the offense and how they needed to, to stop with the turnovers and that could lead to, to positive to positive plays on defense. Well, you and I know as anti-Patriots fans, the easiest way to beat the Patriots is to play good offense, is to run the ball. Don't give Tom Brady as many chances offensively because that's what you do to stop a good offense. If you play smart offense, if you don't give the ball back, if you do execute well, puts the pressure on the other side because they're not going to get as many chances where you didn't score and they have a chance to extend the lead to 7, to 10, to 13. I mean, this Warriors team, you can compare them to the Patriots in that they're a well-oiled program that doesn't see a lot of turnover despite the fact that they graduate so many really talented four-year players. They're just so consistent, and the Beacons are trying to get there. At, as a fourth-year program without any seniors this year, they're still trying to oil out the kinks and show consistency from possession to possession, half to half. And again, for UMass Boston, we haven't seen Charles Mitchell so far in this game, and it's been a, a something that has shown so far, a guy that can shoot from the outside. They've let UMass Boston open that up a little bit. Take a look at what's going on around the Little East Conference here uh, throughout the throughout the evening. And Seth, we talk about games that could mean a lot to the conference standings. And so far, there have been a few that have, have really stood out. But Rhode Island College with a, a big lead so far over Castleton. Not good news if you're a Beacons fan. Now, the Beacons can earn the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over Rhode Island College with a win. I believe that's the final game of the regular season, that one down in Providence. The Beacons 
already earned a nice comeback victory over Rhode Island College this season. That's the 16th of February. That could be a big one. That could not only determine seeding, it could determine who's in who's out. The Beacons also have Plymouth State. That one's next Wednesday. Plymouth right now doing what the Beacons want. They're losing to Keene State, who has made a really nice run here in the second half of the season. But UMass Boston's probably going to fall out of that fifth spot down to sixth. Uh, the Beacons have to be able to either win today or win on senior day for Rob Nascimento on the 13th of February because they still have a couple of difficult road trips and while they should be favorites at Southern Maine at Plymouth and at Rhode Island College it's always a little bit more difficult in conference play to win on the road and anything that anything can happen down the stretch as we know in college basketball and of course you mentioned Keene State Ty Nichols has been very impressive for Keene State this year and leading that group and that charge and you know that they have their eye on their former teammate Jake Colligan who has come over to Eastern Connecticut State and made his mark as well. Really surprising transfer. You don't see a lot of Eastern Nakeen transfers. Those two schools, probably more than any other schools in the conference, don't like each other. I mean, yeah, you have the in-state rivalries, Keene and Plymouth, UMass Boston, UMass Dartmouth, EastCon and WestCon. But everybody knows that Keene and EastCon in men's basketball, men's lacrosse, the Sockers, there's a, there's a really strong rivalry. Those two teams have been towards the top of the conference in most sports for as long as I've been following the Little East. And, of course, for the Little East Conference, also had a game postponed tonight uh, due to weather, so that game was did not happen between Western Connecticut State and UMass Dartmouth, a big one for the standings. Both teams sitting at 7-3 and three in that regard. And, of course, game that happened prior to this one was the UMass Boston women's team as they fell to Eastern Connecticut State by a final score of 72-57. to 57. Seth, that was a game that was wildly taken with the spotlight by the officials, but a game that went back and forth for a little while, then Eastern Connecticut State down the stretch able to open it up. Yeah, I think that's putting it kindly. Uh, the officiating was a little bit all over the place in that game. Not good or bad for either team, just difficult to follow. But Maya, Maya Villard, I don't know what she finished with, but she was really dominant in that fourth quarter. Beacons now swept by Eastern. The Beacons fall behind Eastern in the standings. They're probably down to fourth in the conference. Not sure what uh, Southern Maine, well, Southern Maine's off today. So the Beacons fall a half game behind Southern Maine. Uh, UMass Boston, their first two-game conference losing streak in the last two seasons. The talent's there. They've just struggled these last two games, especially in the fourth quarter. Joey Grassi, 20 points for UMass Boston. Maya Villard finished with 24 for Eastern Connecticut State in that matchup. And as we are set for second half action, they go inside to Hyatt. It's guarded tightly by Hill. Offensive foul. Might have had a little bit of an acting job, but it works. Well, that's huge because otherwise that's three on Javaris Hill. He stood his ground. He definitely took contact to the chest. It's difficult to tell how much of it. And a good sign, at least if you want to see Charles Mitchell, because he just went from the end of the bench. He was called next to the coaches. That's good for UMass Boston because he's a big scoring spark. And you talk about... Really, you don't know how much contact. Sinelli goes in and scores, but that's such a tough call for officials, and it goes back and forth. You see a lot of guys say that's a flop, and then you see a lot of guys that say, hey, that, that's a lot of contact there. Uh, it, it's one of the hardest calls. The block charge call is so difficult, especially when you talk about feet moving. What Hill had to his advantage was his feet were clearly set in position. He was trying to take the charge. Bucket there by Colligan. And just his ability so smooth with the basketball as Sinelli looks to hand it off and does to Sanchez. Sanchez kicks it out Hill. Hill off the bounce. Hill to the rim, no good. Grabbed by Thomas. The other way comes Gonzalez. Splits the D. Kicks it out. Three from Muckle. No good. Great look, though, for Corey Muckle that time. And all created by, guess who, Carlos Gonzalez. Alex Sanchez did just enough to keep Gonzalez from getting all the way downhill. The Beacons fortunate that Muckle missed because he was very good in the first half from distance. Charlie Mitchell kicks it out to Javara Seal. They really think they have a mismatch with Hill. He kicks it out. Three for Mitchell is no good. That one grabbed by Muckle. We'll see how quickly they go to the bench here to Charles Mitchell. who hasn't seen any time yet. And, you know, regardless of whatever it was that kept him out, and there he goes taking off the warm-up. But a lot of guys, you get in in that second half, and it's got fresh legs. They kick it out to the short corner. Thomas, no good. Sinelli grabs the miss. 
a lot better defensive possessions right now by the Beacons. Yeah, the Beacons have figured something out defensively. They're doing a better job of keeping Easter from getting open looks. The other positive in basketball you don't get in as many other sports is you do get that warm-up in between halves where you can work on your stroke a little bit. Boyd to the basket. No foul called, and Coach Harris didn't agree. Thomas to the lane. Reverse, and that one is blocked by Sinelli. And for the first time off the bench comes Charles Mitchell. And he replaces his brother, Charlie. Just different players. Charlie and Charles, both great defenders, but Charlie likes to go to the hoop. Charles is more of a spot-up three-point shooter. Inside they go. Craig can't get it to go, but a foul is called on Javaris Hill, and that is going to be foul number three on Hill, and that one might have been avoidable, just Craig getting right in behind. That's a smart play by Craig, kind of just throwing his body into the chest of Hill, who's got to be a little bit smarter about falling for that contact. I think you got to keep him on, though. I mean, they played him with two fouls for much of the final five or six minutes. He's really been the one thing the Beacons can go back to time and time again against an Eastern team that typically doesn't present that many matchup problems on defense. Hill grabs the rebound. He is not coming out, so they do keep him in with the three fouls. Boyd has he pull up no good, and that one is grabbed by Muckle early in the shot clock there for Michael Boyd. That one almost turned over, but Thomas regains, gathers, and fires up a wild shot. No good. Boyd the other way. Boyd gives it to Hill. Hill down the lane. He's fouled, and the bucket for Javaris Hill. It's a really nice take from Hill after really ill-advised shots on both sides. Boyd way too early in the shot clock to be taking his look, and then Thomas collected the ball and threw up a who knows what kind of look there. Would have been a highlight real play if it went in, but that many players in front, probably smarter to just take it out, use a little bit more of the shot clock. And now Hill will go to the line for one extra, and it's good. So it's back to an 11-point game, and this is where you have a lot of teams and a lot of times you say they could never get over that hump. Here's the hump for UMass Boston where the score's been at 11, it's been around 10, and they just haven't seemed to make the stop. Here's Muckle a three. That's no good. Tipped, and a foul is called on Charles Mitchell. And I'll tell you what, this is just starting to boil over for head coach Jason Harris, and he can do nothing but shrug his shoulders. I mean, Eastern's starting to miss shots. Muckle's had a couple of decent looks from the wing, hasn't been able to connect. And then you're unable to take advantage, and there's an easy play for Craig. Craig has gotten two really good looks on back-to-back -back inbounds underneath the basket. It's the same play on the opposite side for Donnie Craig. And he gets the bucket. It's back to 13. Boyd off the screen. Steps back, kicks it out. Charles Mitchell thought about it. Now puts it on the ground, gives it off to Sinelli. 10 on the shot clock. Sinelli down the lane. That one's swatted away by Craig. Thomas quickly up the floor. Colligan. Colligan had it knocked away. It's out of bounds off of Mitchell. Did not come back and hit Colligan that time. So it'll come out of bounds and be an inbound for Eastern Connecticut State here. And now you have to find a way to not give that easy look on the entry pass as Craig comes off a screen. They switched at that time. Hill able to defend Thomas there. Thomas has thrown up some wild looks here in this second half. And finally, they give it to Gonzalez to reset the offense. Craig guarded tightly. I think Thomas thought he drew enough contact for a foul, and there definitely was contact from Hill. That time it is a foul, and how about this? Charles Mitchell off the bench. He's got two fouls already here in the second half. Well, he's got five to play with, but the other thing is I think he's just over-aggressive because he's got that pent-up energy. Sometimes it's really difficult for guys to come off the bench and get into the game. Makes it even more difficult when you've sat the first 20 minutes. UMass Boston trailing by 13 here at home. You're watching the Beacons Broadcast Network. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the presidential scholarship, which was huge for me. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me.
Welcome back inside the Beacons Broadcast Network. Elijah Gonzalez at the Renski alongside UMass Boston trailing by 13. And the Beacons, meanwhile, have struggled from the floor offensively, but here in the second half, they've gotten some stops defensively, and Eastern Connecticut State's looked a little bit out of sorts. We'll see what this media timeout did. As Muckle pulls it back out to Gonzalez, shot clock is at 15. Gives it off to Thomas. Top of the arc, Craig. Gonzalez finally gets it back. Five on the shot clock. He'll pull the deep trigger, and he's got it. Carlos Gonzalez might have had a few words for Michael Boyd. That was a deep three. Well, and that's the issue. When you're struggling offensively and you have a player like Gonzalez and a player like Colligan, you always have the option to just give it to one of those two guys and say, go to work. Five seconds left. You knew Gonzalez was taking that look, and that was a deep three. Sanchez no good. Rebound grabbed by Muckle. And if you're Sanchez, you can't foul in that situation as he doesn't. Carlos Gonzalez now with the basketball, gives it off to Thomas. Top of the arc, Craig. Gonzalez tries it again. That time it's way off. And it's tipped around and grabbed by Donnie Craig. How about the hustle of Donnie Craig in this game? Colligan going to try the three. That time it's no good, and it's grabbed by Mitchell. Mitchell whacked there. Now to the corner to Sanchez. Sanchez pulled it back out, now takes a baseline, gives it off to Hill. Excellent play by Alex Sanchez. Alex Sanchez has been far and away the best player on the floor for UMass Boston. Great decision making. He knew that as soon as he went to the basket, everyone's going to expect him to take that shot. Able to thread the needle for Hill for another easy look. He had four in the first half. He's very close to double digits, if not already in double digits at this point. Colligan off the screen. Gives it off to Thomas. Thomas back out Gonzalez. Gonzalez down the lane. Nothing called Craig offensive rebound. Colligan, pull-up jumper. That one's good. Second chance points have been vital for Eastern Connecticut State in this game. They don't miss on the second opportunity. No, and they're doing a nice job of extending possessions. The other thing is the Beacons are doing a terrible job on the offensive glass today. Every time that Sanchez or Hill's able to get to the bucket, they're the only player near the basket. They're offensive rebounding with one guy instead of the three or four we're used to seeing at least make an attempt on the offensive glass. Kicked out to Sanchez with five on the shot clock. Sanchez lost it. Two on the shot clock. One, Hill, did he get it off? He did not. Shot clock violation. And that one, just a solid defensive possession by Eastern Connecticut State, but not a lot of movement from the Beacons. No, and you should never get a shot clock violation in front of your own bench. Everyone should be, Sanchez picked up the ball and didn't recognize it for a full second. Could have gotten it off instead of forced up a shot. Muckle blocked it, and Hill almost got it up in time. I mean, that's just a cardinal sin. The bench has to be more invested. That's a, a team turnover more than anything else. Craig gets the basketball across. Gives it to Gonzalez, and now he resets with 15 on the shot clock. Thomas inside to Craig. Craig swatted away. Thomas now. No good, and the rebound grabbed by Mitchell. Charlie Mitchell back into the game. Gives it off. Michael Boyd a three. Rattles in and out, no good. Grabbed by Colligan. The other way, Colligan almost lost it. Charles Mitchell takes it away from the backside. Saves it. It's live in the air and a foul on Colligan. A terrific all-around hustle play by the Mitchell brothers. Chaos. That is what those two are. And that's just a great play by Charles, recognizing I've got to save that. It was an over-the-back foul. A nice job by Charlie to use his body to kind of box out Colligan on the loose ball. That was a tremendous play. And that's the kind of play you need when you're down double digits trying to make a second-half comeback. Hand off to Charlie Mitchell. Decides not to pull the trigger and pull it back out. Charles Mitchell, he will pull the trigger, and he's got it all. And after his best defensive play thus far, he uses that as a little confidence, knocks down the three. Beacons back to within 13. That's where they started the half. And they've got the bench engaged once again. See if they can get the crowd, which is by far the largest we've seen here in the month of January with the students all back, invested in this game. They have really been ice very quiet since about the first five minutes. Gonzalez. Inside pass to Thomas and one. 
That's one way to quiet down the crowd. Unreal vision from Gonzalez. Everyone thought he was shooting. Left it down for Thomas wide open, and that's now four on Javaris Hill. Huge play as, again, you go to your senior leader, and that was a really, really strong play from Gonzalez. Free throw from Thomas is good. That was the first points of the half for Seth Thomas in a quiet second half thus far. Now UMass Boston needs a response. Hand off to Boyd. He's going to go right at Gonzalez. Down the lane. Lots of contact, lots of bodies. Hill battling there. Thomas gets it out. And now here comes Eastern Connecticut State quickly. Nunez, wide open three. He's fouled, and the bucket for Nunez. Out of control from Charlie Mitchell, but also out of control overall. I mean, the Beacons have now given up four three-point plays. This has a chance to be a four-point play, but that's just a situation where Charlie's got to recognize, I'm not going to get there. And he didn't hit his feet there. He hit him in the chest as that ball's released. You know that you're giving up three free throws at minimum in that situation. That's a play where you like the hustle, but take it easy, big guy. See if the three goes down one way or another. Don't make the play even worse for your team by fouling and guaranteeing the three free throws. This, this game just went from potentially on the brink of a Beacons comeback to out of control with really two plays that Gonzalez looked for Thomas and now the three potentially four-point play from Nunez. We talk about the hill and the, and the the peak that it's been for UMass Boston, and they've climbed back. They've got it back to 11 a few times, but here we are sitting at a 19-point affair, and part of the reason being, again, we talk about what UMass Boston has to bring to the table. They've got guys that are talented, but nobody in the conference, maybe besides Keen State, has a guy as talented as Carlos Gonzalez. Ty Nichols might be more talented than Carlos Gonzalez. Ty Nichols is a legitimate D2, low D1 player who just never really got his chance. I mean, you're talking about a 2,000-point scorer, but Carlos Gonzalez is as close as you're going to get because maybe he's not going to score 27.9 points per game or whatever Ty Nichols has done the last week. Came in with second in the country last week to the Clark but it, the decision-making is the same as Ty Nichols. They're just such smart players. They've got four years of experience. They're making the right decisions. And I wouldn't say Gonzalez has had a huge game, but it is so evident to the two of us up top. Wherever Gonzalez goes, that's got to be the focus on offense for Eastern. And he's made some really big decisions after the offense, kind of bogged down late in the first half, early in the second. First time we're seeing Mark Monroe all evening. He's checked in. Charles Mitchell gives it off. Sanchez. Sanchez pulls it back out. Hand it off to Boyd. Eight on the shot clock. Boyd down the lane. Nice Euro step and score. Did not look like the Beacons had much going on on offense, but as soon as Boyd received it, just wove his way down low. It's interesting with Monroe. He's obviously got the size to kind of match up with Eastern, but I think the Beacons might have avoided using him early because these Eastern bigs, they all move so well that he could have some trouble keeping up. Well, there's Donnie Craig who knocks down the three. Talk about an energy guy off the bench. Donnie Craig has been that for the Warriors tonight. And that's another thing about the Warriors as you look at them play tonight. This is a team that is depth and depth and more depth. Depth, 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 and all of that depth has, has experience. I mean, the Beacons don't bring seniors off their bench. The Beacons don't have seniors who see time. All of these Eastern players have not only played in big conference games, played in the NCAA. They know what they're doing in these situations, and the movement is so much better from Eastern off the ball than it is for UMass Boston. The Beacons sometimes get a little bit lackadaisical and they stand and wait for someone to do something. Eastern, there's a little bit more motion and that's why you got a wide open three there from Craig, just able to find a spot and his teammates found it. You talk about Gonzalez as Javaris Hill will check out, Sinelli checks in. Last year, a guy who only averaged around 11 points a game and a guy who really has flourished in the point guard position, five assists per game, but now over 17 points a game for Carlos Gonzalez. The number's six points better than what it was a season ago. Nunez now guarded by Michael Boyd. 
Looking to go inside is Cray. New substitute on, that's Jake McCarthy, the junior. That one tapped out of bounds, and that's exactly what we're talking about. A guy who hasn't seen a minute in this game is a junior forward who appeared in just 19 games last season. Yeah, I mean, that's a difference the Beacons don't have. Alex Sanchez, they, met, they lost him after his freshman year to an injury. He missed all of last season. He's a redshirt sophomore. Dason Snell is the only guy who's been there for three years, and he plays 25 to 30 minutes a game. McCarthy inside and makes an impact right off the bench. Again, Gonzalez doing all the hard work, knowing the big guy's going to get there. And How about that for an easy start for McCarthy? Oh, well, I'm just going to catch it and put it in with no one around me. I mean, that's what Gonzalez does well, getting his teammates involved, making it easier for them. Nunez penetrates, kicks it inside to Craig. No good. Grabbed by Craig, though. Gonzalez kicks. Nunez a three from the top of the arc. No good. McCarthy offensive rebound. Ed puts it back in. Four straight points for McCarthy off the bench. Jason Harris wasn't happy with the effort there of Mark Monroe immediately telling Malik Lorquette to head to the scores table. I don't think, I think Monroe kind of gave up on the play and that led to the easy look for McCarthy. Sanchez fired it into the stands. A turnover for UMass Boston and a timeout on the floor. UMass Boston trailing by a score of 63-39 here inside the Clark Athletic Center. Division three allows you to give yourself to other things. Having that free time allows me to pursue the things that I want to pursue. Division three athletics affords students the opportunity to you know, engage in the other interests in their campus and in their lives outside of that sport. It allows you to just be able to do everything you want to do. I wouldn't change it to the world. Endurance and speed. Incredible power. Welcome back inside the Clark Athletic Center. UMass Boston Beacons trailing by a score of 63-39. And the Beacons, right now, it's been tough sledding here through this second half as Gonzalez gives off McCarthy. How about six straight? And that's a guy who comes off the bench, hasn't played at all, gets the easy first basket, then he gets an offensive rebound and put back, and now he's feeling it. Let's draw up a play for him out of the timeout. It's really good play by the offense, but it's also a nice play by Geithner recognizing, hey, this guy's feeling it a little bit. Let's get him some looks. And that's a really, that's obviously within his wheelhouse over there on the baseline. It's fun to watch this Eastern team. Obviously, it's not fun to play them. And we want to see UMass Boston be more successful today, but Eastern does a lot of things that are fun to watch because they execute things so well. You can kind of see what's going on within that big brain of the Eastern team, and, and they're able to, to do things that some other teams at this level just aren't able to do on a night-in, night-out basis. Well, Geithner in his th 17th year, now the longest-standing coach in program history. That one goes out of bounds, and mentioned they went to the NCAA tournament a year ago and how about this no team in that Little East Conference tournament came within single digits of them last year it was an impressive run to the tournament then able to get the win in the NCAA tournament before falling by double figures but of course at the division three level that's that's where you meet those teams that you know are very talented Sanchez skies it high and in and that really the first time, unlike the Division I and even the Division II level to some extent, you get to see other national teams as that one is a three-pointer good from Nunez. It's a lot of in-conference, teams close by. Then once you hit that NCAA tournament, that's where you start to travel a little bit 
and start seeing some very talented teams that, like Eastern Connecticut State with their dominance in Little East Conference, other teams around the area had done the same thing. Yeah, you, you don't get much better basketball than in New England and in the Mid-Atlantic because you have the NESCAC teams, which typically you have a team who's in the top five, top ten. Then you have teams out of the New Mac. Babson, of course, won a national championship a couple years ago. Seen MIT a couple times this season. That is a very senior-laden team. They've got six seniors who have all seen a ton of time, a couple of really talented underclassmen. And then you have some teams. We've seen Albertus Magnus uh, be really successful over the past couple of years, a little bit down this season. The CCC has gotten a little bit better with Nichols and Endicott going deeper into the NCAA. And then you go down to the Mid-Atlantic and you get teams like Rowan out of the NJAC or Johns Hopkins is pretty much successful at everything, but they're very good at men's basketball. So it's very fun to watch because a team that can get through the New England uh, mid-Atlantic side of the bracket, or at least one of them, because typically the New England schools flow into several portions of the bracket because there's so many of them. That's a team that's going to be really, really good. Not to say that the central region isn't good or out west. I mean, you have really good teams out on the west coast that nobody out here really watches because the games are so late. Uh, but that's a team that's battle-tested because there are so many talented teams within a su such a short distance. comes down more to the to the coaching and execution then who has more talent because all of those teams are stacked. And you mentioned in a lot of that top 25 rankings that come out, you see a lot of teams from this area. You see maybe a few from the Central, a few from the West, and of course you got to include the state of Texas because why not, but you get a lot of teams that are kind of all over the map, and that really is where the majority of the power comes from in the basketball realm of things as pick up of the dribble there by Muckle, but... Like you mentioned, this is a talented Eastern Connecticut State team that the shot clock expires and we'll have a travel before that on McCarthy. But every year you see teams like Eastern Connecticut State and if you're, you're not ranked or you're receiving votes, that's always the big thing is a lot of these teams that get into the NCAA tournament by winning their conference tournament but just continuing to power up the rankings and powder up their schedule also helps a little bit as well. Well, and Eastern is a team that located in Connecticut. They play a lot of those NESCAC teams. They play a really difficult schedule, recognizing it's only going to help them when they get to conference play. I mean, last year, the Warriors beat Johnson and Wales, a decent team out of the GNAC, and then lost to Middlebury in the second round. Middlebury, one of those NESCAC teams that's so difficult because you have D1 talent heading to a D3 school because of the academics that are really hard to match. Three-pointer good by Alex Sanchez. Of course, you mentioned Johns Hopkins, one of those same sort of schools. High academic rigor in that one, no good. And now quickly, UMass Boston comes the other direction. Alex Sanchez lays it in. Alex Sanchez is a guy who absolutely will not back down. He's been so good all night, not just scoring the basketball, but he's the one guy right now who is still playing at 110%. That speed's there, the energy's still there. He recognizes that, yes, the scoreboard might be out of play, but this is a chance for this Beacons team to get better. And when you have so much youth, you can get better in the final eight minutes of a game that you're down by close to 30 points. You have a chance to get better for Saturday when you play a Southern Maine team that you beat by one point on your home floor. And that win in conference means just as much as this one because neither of those teams, Southern Maine towards the bottom, Eastern at the top, are likely to be a tiebreaker for UMass Boston. It's more important to just get a little bit more consistency game to game, and that's what the Beacons have lacked. Well, and that's something that Coach Harris has continually talked about, and we've heard it from both the men's and women's side. Of course, the women's team having a little bit more success with the win column, but effort. That's always a big thing with both these teams. And for Coach Harris, again, Right now, we're seeing his team down by 22, but still showing effort that this game might not be over by any means, but this is a game where they're just continuing to pour the effort in. Well, you know UMass Boston's doing something right because Jake Colligan's still out there, and so is Gonzalez. So Bill Geithner at, at least is worried enough to keep two of his leaders out there. I mean, Gonzalez played the full 20 minutes in the first half. I don't know if he's gone to the bench here in the second. Colligan's only gone for a short rest. Beacons have done enough here to keep the pressure on Eastern, although you said it, Eastern doesn't have the 
best backcourt depth, especially compared to what they have in the front court. Jump ball, and the ball will go to UMass Boston. So a turnover by the, Be by the Warriors. And right now, for the Beacons, again, just trying to chip and chip away as Boyd brings it up the floor. Hand off there to Mitchell. Almost threw it away. Sanchez, though, able to save it. Shot clock winding to 15. Hand off to Boyd. Boyd to the rim. Boyd can't get it to go. You want to talk about a guy who is trying to become that Colligan, that Gonzalez. It's Michael Boyd. At the end of shot clocks, UMass Boston very confident in just giving him the basketball. Michael Boyd is a really unique matchup problem for a lot of teams because he's not all that tall. At least he's not all that strong, although I think he is pretty strong on the ball. He has so many different weapons in his arsenal. He's one of the few guys at this level who has a really good mid-range game. I think he's actually more comfortable pulling up for a deep two than a deep three, and a lot of guys don't even defend that because they don't expect it. He's a guy who's very comfortable with the ball in his hands, and his teammates are comfortable, and I think that's just as important. They know that he's going to get a good look or he's going to find a teammate for a good look. He's really developed into one of the leaders on this team as a sophomore. And a foul is called on Kareem Octavian, but they are making it hard for Gonzalez to get the basketball. And right now, if you're Coach Bill Geithner, you look at this game and you say, hey, guys, listen, this is the type of pressure and this is the type of things that we'll be seeing throughout the year. They've got a big target on their back, regardless of if it's in the Little East Conference play or in the NCAA tournament. He's got to be saying, hey, guys, this is, this is where we need to excel is in situations like this, full court pressure, and just finding ways to score regardless. I mean, this team hasn't shown a lot of weaknesses. I think they've done a pretty good job dealing with the ball. But you're going to go through lulls. And, and can you find a way to, to deal with the pressure of Gonzalez maybe not being able to handle the ball or being forced to give up the ball and find other go-to ball handlers or other go-to scorers? Char Charles Mitchell, no good. Rebound Lorquette. He kicks it out to Boyd. Swing to Octavian. That's a deep three. It's no good. And the rebound grabbed by Gonzalez. You got to get up quick shots, but not so sure that was the look for Octavian. Yeah, Octavian had a full dribble and maybe a little bit more to step in for a, a little easier look at a three. Surprised that Lorquette on the kick out to Boyd. Boyd didn't take it himself wide open on the wing. But if nothing else, the energy level has been here from UMass Boston down the stretch. I think they went through a little lull. They felt sorry for themselves when the deficit stretched out. But whatever Jason Harris said at the under eight timeout, the Beacons have taken it to heart and they've really kicked up the energy level and, and they're continuing to push down the stretch of this likely conference loss. And for UMass Boston now trailing at 68-47, you mentioned the upcoming schedule for the Beacons and of course they've got a couple of tough games coming up down the stretch. They still have uh, a couple of teams that are you know higher up in the standings, but you mentioned that game at Southern Maine, you've got the game at Plymouth State, and a couple of very winnable games for UMass Boston here coming up. Yeah, the Beacons, those next two are absolutely huge. If you win both of them, then you're probably in a good spot unless Rhode Island College or Plymouth State wins out because you already, you'd already you have the tiebreaker over Plymouth State. The Beacons, if you lose one or two of those, then you need to beat UMass Dartmouth, maybe beat Rhode Island College. So two huge ones, both on the road, Always more difficult when you're a younger team to play on the road, and that's going to come down to can the Beacons be consistent enough. That'll send Alex Sanchez to the line and over the back foul by Seth Thomas. Of course, have the home game coming up against UMass Dartmouth at 7.30 on February 13th. But again, you look at that stretch, and really for Eastern Connecticut State, things start to lighten up maybe just a hair, but... Then you have a couple of very tough ones, including one against Western Connecticut State. And then how about you have to finish the year at Keene State? I think Bill Geithner is going to love that, especially if they can still hold a little bit of an edge. Keene State with three losses, Eastern with just the one thus far. Now they'll play Western, a team that handed them their only conference loss on the road, but still a big one. That's a rivalry game uh, on the 9th of February, which could be a big one because if Eastern can win – up till that point, then they play, play at last place. Castle, they pretty much can wrap up the regular season title. But playing Keene State, a team you're likely to play again, whether it be the semifinals or the finals, 
that's going to give you some confidence, and it's also a really good tournament, uh, a good precursor for the tournament because you're going to play a tournament-style game on senior day for Ty Nichols. Layup no good by Sanchez. It's out of bounds. And we will have a timeout on the floor. UMass Boston trailing here at home. Take a break on the Beacons Broadcast Network. What separates UMass Boston from other schools is the fact that a large percentage of students commute. For me, it takes two hours each day to go to and from school. But every second has been worth it because the students that come here are serious about learning, they value their education, and understand where it'll take them in the future. This is what UMass Boston means to me. Welcome back on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Elijah Gonzalez, Seth Lorensky alongside as UMass Boston looking to battle back. Octavian, three-pointer no good. The Little East Conference has been so far dominated by Eastern Connecticut State, and tonight we're watching why. And in part because of the man with the ball, Carlos Gonzalez, what he's capable of doing on both ends of the floor. Gonzalez, great pass to Craig, and lays it in. I'm not quite sure why Gonzalez is in the game. Up by 25 with under 40 to go, but it's fun to watch. It's a really nice pass, and Craig, who's just brought the energy all game long. There's a nice block on Octavian on the corner three. He's got great court vision. It, it's really, really fun to watch, and he's a pass-first point guard who can score when he wants to. I mean, he's really, really good four-year player and that's what the Beacons right now are, are missing they don't have that four-year player that four-year leader who can make the right decision time after time kicked out down the lane Muckle lost it Craig keeps it alive Seth Thomas three that's his first of the night the one stat that Jason Harris is going to look at more than any other and be really disappointed with this team is the offensive rebounding stat Eastern has probably doubled up, if not tripled up, the Beacons. They've had way too many second chance points. And you said it, any time Eastern has gotten a good look on a second chance, they've hit it. That was just too easy. Thomas, a wide open corner three. Beacons came in plus five. Eastern came in minus, not too many, but they weren't one of the better rebounding teams. It's minus 3.1. That's an eight rebound gap per game. And I think Eastern's at least even, if not better than that. And the offensive rebounding numbers are even worse so Sanchez will go to the line substitutions galore and Alex Sanchez will be at the free throw line we still we finally have seen Carlos Gonzalez take a seat rebound grabbed here and it's because checking in is Dante Christian and two minutes to go Beacons will bring on Ram Nascimento for the first time, believe all season at home, certainly in conference play, the lone senior on the team. Nascimento will inbound that after the jumper was good. 20 point gap, excuse me, 30 point gap. As Sanchez goes to the rim and a foul is gonna be called. And Nunez is upset. But Sanchez will be at the line. Talk about a guy who just continued to battle and battle, Alex Sanchez. Free throws up and good. Boyd checks out. Lou will check in. CC some action. And again, these are some freshmen that aren't seeing a ton of minutes right now, but like you mentioned, down the line, they could be guys that can come off the benches, roll guys. There's just a lot that Jason Harris can do with this group. And 
the ceiling is far from reached with these guys. No, I, I don't think that they've played a game this season where Jason Harris has said, this is where I thought my team could be. They, they just have so much youth. You see it right now. Julius Goins and, and Z. Lu are two guys that could help the Beacons. They're long, they're strong, but they just haven't quite gotten to the point here at college, and that's what Julius Goins can do. A thunderous right-hand slam. Julius Goins to the rim, and Christian just trying to go up right with him. Probably wasn't the best decision. Very few players at the college level can jump as well as Julius Goins. Sometimes he struggles in the flow of the offense or he's a little bit too aggressive defensively. He's a guy who typically sees consistent minutes, but that was a really nice job, and we've seen that from him. He's a tremendous leaper. Even from the, the start during preseason, he was putting down some very impressive dunks. Christian gives it off. Just about a minute to go. Boy, this place would erupt if Goins got another fast break, wouldn't they? That one is a foul that's going to go on Goins, and that will effectively send the Warriors to the line, and it'll be Moyes that will go. Goins is still laughing about his dunk. That was a pretty fun moment for the freshman who sometimes in conference it's a little bit difficult. That was just the... Seventh foul on the Beacons, Eastern's already with 10. Going spins and he's feeling it now. That's a foul that's gonna go on Moyes. And how about Moyes, he just, he said, you're not gonna try and dunk it. No, there's no poster on Moyes. <laughs> Smart play there, but Julius Goins wanted the continuation. He wanted to see how much he could spin and potentially get a shot off. Here's the free throw and the first one, no good. He's now 0 for 2 from the line. Yeah, that, that's an area he and a lot of the Beacons are going to have to work on. You can, you can just tell from the ball coming out of his hand that he's not quite feeling confident. Second one, that one looked more confident. But again, Goins was a guy early in the year. We saw a little bit of playing time from him, and that's just how this season's gone for Jason Harris. He's had to continue to look at guys and continue to evaluate. But we've seen some guys get some minutes, and those minutes dwindled a little bit. Yeah, same thing with Z. Lu. Two guys who they have the energy. They're just still trying to adjust the college level. Obviously not having Charles Mitchell in the first half hurt the Beacons. St. Germain steps back. He'll try the three. No good. Tap back out. He'll kick it out. Lou gives it off to Goins, who's double teamed. To the rim, he's fouled and won. Julius Goins. Making things go here late, it's now 79-54. Why not? A quick five points for Goins. Chance for six, and clearly he's a guy who wants some more minutes. Hey, coach, look at what I can do, and it's been very aggressive. That's kind of what the Beacons need. They need some more guys who are looking for baskets. Well, you see Goins frame, and talk about Javaris Hill, guy who's filled out. A little bit more than Goins, but those two guys down low together, that's two athletic bigs that can stretch the floor and take it to the rim. So, again, this is a team that is very young and still trying to figure itself out. And the Warriors have figured out another win in conference play as the clock ticks, and this will end it. The Eastern Connecticut State Warriors come away victorious. It's a 79-54 win over the UMass Boston Beacons. They move now to 27-4 on the year and 14-1 in Little East Conference play. The UMass Boston Beacons falling to 16-12 and 9-6 in Little East Conference play. A tough loss for, excuse me, for UMass Boston. They fall now to 5-5 five and five and five in, in Little East Conference play. Uh, but, Seth, you talk about what UMass Boston has done throughout this game. A tough end to it, but, again, Eastern Connecticut State just flexing their muscles in this one. Eastern showed that they were the more experienced team, that they were the better team offensively. Beacons just a little bit of inexperience, and we really saw it. It was a 13-point game with about 12 minutes to go, and the Beacons give up a three-point play, then they give up a four-point play on a foul three, and that blew the game wide open. That's the difference. UMass Boston needs 
runs like that for themselves. Instead, anytime there was a run today, with the exception of Julius Goins in the last minute, it was Eastern stretching out the lead. UMass Boston was never able to counter with a big blow of their own to get back into it. So UMass Boston falling 79-54. Beacons falling to 10-10 and on the year and 6-6 six and six in Little East Conference play. We'll step aside. We come back. We'll have more for you right here from the Clark, Th Clark Athletic Center. You're watching the Beacons Broadcast Network. I came from a working class family. I grew up in a hot edge section of Lowell, Massachusetts. And uh, I lived with my six siblings and my parents in a four bedroom house that had one bathroom. I knew that the only way that I was going to uh, get to where I wanted to get to was if I got a high quality college education and I had the University of Massachusetts right in my hometown. It made a difference. I'm the first undergraduate alumnus to uh, lead this university. I'm very proud of that. I think with that comes a special responsibility as a steward, as a protector. Every student that I see that walks through the door, I mean, I see myself, I was exactly where they are now. I had their same challenges, their same aspirations, their same dreams. And it makes me want to fight for them. It makes me want to make sure that they get every opportunity that I got. I was literally able to transform my life because of the University of Massachusetts, and I want that for every single student that walks through the door. Welcome back on the Beacons Broadcast Network. I'm Elijah Gonzalez, and I'm joined by head coach Jason Harris. Coach, tough one for your team tonight. What are some things moving forward that you think you need to work on as a group? Oof. Where you want me to start? You know, it's, oof. I, I, didn't, I didn't think uh, effort was necessarily an issue tonight, so I'm, I'm glad about that. But, I mean, come on, we're, we're almost in February. You know, we got f five games left, man. I mean, execution, defense, you know, turnovers. And like I said, the list is long. Uh, but we're not going to quit. You know, we're not going to quit coaching them. They're not going to quit playing. You know, got to get ready because, you know, Saturday's a big one. You know, Saturday's a big one right now. And coach, you talk about Saturday upcoming and a couple of games coming up where you know your team is sitting in the standings right now. This is a spot where you guys can maybe move up with a few wins. What's the key going into those games, especially games that you feel you have the upper hand? I love your optimism, but I mean, right now I'm not I'm not looking at moving up, man. I'm looking at holding on. You know, I mean, that's just the reality of it. It's a tough league, and you know, any night anybody can win. And you know, especially with us going down to six out of only six making it. You know, we're in for a dogfight, man. We are in for an absolute dogfight. But, you know, we've been in for dogfights the last two years. You know, different team, but, you know, the staff, we've gone through it. So we just got to prepare them the right way. And ultimately, it's on us as a staff. So we just get back to work, man, and focus and try to find a way to get Saturday. I mean, you got to get over this one quick. It's going to sting and for the next couple of days. But right now, you know, in the next five minutes, I got to find a way to shift to Southern Maine, and I got and I got to do it fast. All right, Coach, well, thank you very much, and best of luck in, uh, in the shift to Southern Maine. That's head coach Jason Harris, the UMass Boston Beacons. They fall tonight. We'll step aside. We come back. We'll have final statistics for you right here inside the Clark. You're watching the Beacons Broadcast Network. My name is Albie Daly. I'm from uh, Able Park, New York. I'm a forward on the UMass Boston men's hockey team, and my current major is exercise and health sciences. Being a member of the men's hockey team is a tremendous honor just because being able to play collegiate sport while pursuing my dreams uh, of becoming a physical therapist and studying what I'd like to in school means a lot. My favorite memory as a member of the men's hockey team would probably be a big goal that I scored last year, the NCAA quarterfinals, the ECAC East quarterfinals against the University of New England. What a turn in momentum! Just because it was a big boost for both myself and, and our team moving forward. Perfect shot right there over the shoulder of the goaltender, Trost. Frozen Fenway was just our outdoor game at Fenway Park, and it was a tremendous experience. I think both for me and the guys on the team and, you know, the program as a whole. But well, we got to see the Red Sox locker room, which was an awesome experience. And just being at Fenway Park when you go to school in Boston is, is second to none, really. And that's what you look for, you know, when you're trying to experience collegiate athletics. And it's a really cool thing to be a part of. Being a student athlete at UMass Boston is a, a tremendous honor just because gives you the chance to really focus on your studies in a, in a great academic environment while you know, pursuing what you want athletically. So it's a, it's a pretty powerful thing. I'm 
Alexa Capion. I'm from Messina, New York. I'm a junior on the women's ice hockey team and I'm an exercise health science major. But when I got here, I met Coach Harris and I saw the facility and I met a couple of the girls on the team and I pretty much got a feel of the program and I knew right away that this is where I wanted to go to school. We have all league games for the rest of the year, so that's going to be a huge test for us. We need those points to hopefully come out with a good standing for playoffs. A couple of highlights from the last couple of years that I've been playing was probably last year when we won our uh, first Codfish Bowl. We made history that year. It was really exciting to be part of that. I don't have that very many goals, but when I do score, it's definitely a big Shot deal. That's <laughs> a goal. For the past three years, we've had Emily. She is uh, a member of the Team Impact Program, and that's for children with illnesses that want to be part of a collegiate program. She's great. She comes and watches all of our games. She has her own jersey. She has her own stick. We've got her all this equipment. It's really awesome to have. She gives us a lot of motivation, and she comes in the locker room and talks to us before games, and it's really cool to have her here and be part of our team. When I graduate, I definitely want to go to graduate school, most likely for either athletic training or physical therapy. Our trainers here have definitely given me an insight about what it takes to be an athletic trainer. They're always on top of everything. They always know how to help us and what to do and what not to do. They're always there for us when we need them, and that's given me a lot of help with what I could be doing after I graduate, so that's nice to have them. Psychology is about understanding the individual and understanding the mind and understanding how it affects others. The main reason why I want to combine psychology and business degrees is because I want to understand the business decisions that are made. I'm Nurchin Chalabi. I'm from Turkey originally. I'm a senior at the five-year BA to MBA program at UMass Boston. Right now I'm doing an internship, so I will be starting to get experience in the field. And on top of that, getting an MBA and adding that. Welcome back on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Elijah Gonzalez, Seth Orensky alongside UMass Boston falls by a final score of 79 to 54. We take a look at the final statistics for both of these teams and for UMass Boston. Again, the numbers don't look all that impressive, but what was impressive so far throughout this season has been Eastern Connecticut State, and they've been a tough team to beat. Again, 12 offensive rebounds, too many to give up. The offensive efficiency, we knew it would be there. 51% from the field, 42% from distance. Bill Geithner's going to look at a 50% mark from the free throw line and say, we need to be better. And that's what winning teams do. They always find an issue. Um, that's why Greg Popovich calls timeout 16 seconds into the game when his team's down 2-0. You're not going to accept mediocrity. And, and the Warriors out-rebounded the Beacons by 11. That's... That's not what the stats said should happen, but Eastern doing a nice job there. 19 assists to 13 turnovers, 7 for the Beacons to 14. There's just a, there's a lot of things to correct. Um, it's easy for us to stay positive because we're here for the games and we don't have to sit through practices and we're not taking the long road trips. We both feel like this Beacons team is better than their record shows, better than their conference record shows, but you have to put it on display for 40 minutes and they didn't do that today against Eastern and even if they played their best game I don't know if they're quite ready to beat Eastern who played I don't know 80 85 percent of their best game points they slowed down but anytime they really slowed down Bill Geithner got the ball into the hands of Gonzalez and Colligan and they're special and you talked about for Jason Harris he said there's a lot of things we need to correct coming in and you know, he said that we're just trying to hang on right now a couple of games coming up some big ones for them we take a look at the team leaders but you, you look at how this game played out and Seth Thomas with an impressive day for Alex Sanchez, of course, just another game in which he totaled over 20 points in the contest. But UMass Boston, the question becomes, they're going to need some other guys to step up offensively. It's happened too much. We talked about balance scoring being a key. 21 from Alex Sanchez. Javaris Hill had nine on just five field goal attempts, which seems really low because he was so aggressive, but he drew a lot, of, a lot of fouls, but no one else in double digits. Michael Boyd, 3 of 15 for 7 points. I mean, the Beacons to have a chance today, you had to see 4 guys in double digits. You had to see a much higher field goal percentage. It wasn't there, and the crazy part is, 20 from Thomas, 10 from Craig, and then a couple guys with 7, 8, or 9, but Colligan and Gonzalez, just being out there, making some of the decisions they made, 
they were worth a lot more than the amount of points they put up on the scoreboard. Gonzalez just missed out a double-double with eight points and ten assists. Yeah, and Gonzalez, a very impressive showing both offensively as well as defensively, but Eastern Connecticut, they win by a final score of 79-54. to 54. Well, that'll do it for our broadcast right here inside the Clark Athletic Center. Once again, our final score, UMass Boston Falls, 79-54. to 54. Thank you for tuning in and for our entire broadcast crew saying so long 